All right, you ready? Yep. How are we going? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, damn it. <sighs> Serious time. Stop it, Dolan. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And we have a special guest this week. Introduce yourself for us. Hello, I am Katie Webster. Katie, why are you here? Um, because during my interview, um, I brought up M Hops, mm-hmm. and here we are. Here we are. So, and if you watched uh, Katie's uh, bio that we bio. recorded, it was just a couple weeks ago, right? It, mm-hmm. it just wasn't that long ago. Um, she talked about being a Hanson fan, yes. and we explored wow. that a little bit because I thought that's super interesting. That. That it's, is super interesting. When did they came on the scene? In... 1998. Okay. And it's not 1998 <laughs> anymore. <laughs> right? 21 and, years later. Right. And yeah. you always, there's those bands out there. As Brian likes to talk about music, there are those bands out there. And you always, you meet somebody and like, my favorite band is Hanson, right? Or my favorite band is... Cake. Exactly. Cake. Like mm-hmm. Dolan is yeah. weirdness. Or, <laughs> right? Uh, Aaron Daly's favorite band is Seven Mary Three. Yes. I Okay. I mean, none of those are necessarily mainstream right now. But no. for whatever reason, that music stuck with you and you still love it. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, Katie, where did... So you brought us three different beers. Yes. I, I want to get into why you love why you love Hanson so much. But let's talk... Let's, let's open one of these up first. I got to oh, tell okay. you, we got to do this one last. We'll do that one last. Because of just what it is. It'll really mess up our cups mm, so good call okay so we have three different ones we have their hansen brothers has have their own brewery in tulsa oklahoma and their their flagship beer is called mm hops i mean it has to be called that right if it didn't if it wasn't called that i would be so disappointed so i think that's the one we need to try first we're going to call this the set list today rich what's on the set list the first song the set list, the first song mm-hmm. is Hops. Mm Hops. Boy, that is an old school color, isn't it? It is. That. It is darker than... So last episode was uh, was Samuel Adams, Boston yeah. Lager, right? And so this is almost... This is a pale, so it's not a, a lager. It's a pale ale. Right. It is darker than... It is darker than Sam Adams. Yeah, it's very... Yeah, I would agree with you. Look at all the carbonation in there good carbonation smells good it smells good it smells that smells like just west straight up west coast Mm -hmm. dolan's gonna not like that one i'm gonna guess we'll see we'll see his palate has changed i know in 51 episodes it has changed a lot oh okay um hops um hops Mm. without singing the song everybody is singing it in their head right now. (laughs) i was just thinking that yeah Mm. wow hmm it's very hoppy. It is very hoppy. Pretty citrusy. That's what I get. A lot of citrus. Yep. At the very at the end of there. Hmm. It is West Coast though. I mean that this is a West Coast style. Oh yeah. Without Mr. a doubt. Tra- tra- yeah, traditional. Mm-hmm. I got tongue tied. Traditional style. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty good. I didn't. I guess I didn't expect that. I didn't know what to expect necessarily. I'm impressed though that for. Uh, can you call Hanson mainstream? Could you call them mainstream in the beginning? Yes. Okay. Dude, they were more than mainstream. Yes. Where were you? They, w- <laughs> they were a phenomenon. That's okay. I have the stats, bro. We're gonna get into this, but I here's rich. Honestly, here's what I expected. I expected something just fairly average, uh, lighter in color, maybe lighter just mm. in general. Because your target audience is Katie, right? I mean, your target audience is women that liked this band. Yeah, but you know what? Maybe that's not their target audience. It doesn't seem to be. Maybe they love beer, Mm -hmm. and they want to make good beer that they want to drink. And if we find it that way Mm -hmm. through their smash hit song, then good. I love how how Katie brought it to us in the first place. How we I didn't even know about them making their own beer. I'd heard about it. Yeah? I'd heard rumors through the 
the beer circles, you know, that they had this out there, but nobody I know has been to Tulsa, Oklahoma. No. I went just to get it. <laughs> just to get that, it. <laughs> we got to get into this. <laughs> we have got to get into it. Okay, so tell us about the first time you heard Hanson. Mm-hmm. Um, Why did it stick with you? Why is it still there? I don't It's catchy. Okay. I mean, I'll give you that. It yeah, is. It's catchy. It is catchy. How, um, how old were you when it came out? This isn't a job interview, so I can technically ask how 16? old. Yes. No. 11? For real? 11. I've been liking them for 25 years. You're way younger than we are. <laughs> I didn't. Maybe. <laughs> Man. That's okay. Okay. No, I, that's totally yeah. fine. That's um, totally fine. They have been like a band for over 25 years. Mm-hmm. With a number of albums, so, so right? think of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a list of them. We're, g- we're going to get into that. Hit us. You want to hear the list of the albums? Let's, what do you got? People only think there's one. Mm-hmm. Those people are wrong. <laughs> All right, let's see. I have two pages of Hanson music-related research oh, holy here. Holy macro. Um, do I have a list of them? Maybe I, I was... They have a, I didn't write the names down. There's 11, mo- there's 11 total albums out there, including wow. two Christmas albums, which I would be a fan of because I love Christmas music. Do you have these? You're shaking oh, your head. Oh, yes. For, All of them. Oh, my and gosh. And then on their wiki, their wiki page, mm-hmm. uh, which I re- I've, have now bookmarked as a favorite... Um, as you should. Two, there's two more albums in the hopper, it says. There's like one scheduled for the, later this year, and then there's one scheduled for next year. Okay. Um, so 13 total, we're going to say. Okay. So yeah, there we go. How has their music changed over the years? Um, it's definitely gotten better. Um, they've just matured and grown musically. Mm-hmm. Here's, so. here's how I know that's true. Because the drummer was 12 years old. He mm. was like nine. There yeah. you go. Eight. For <laughs> real? He's he's the youngest Grammy-nominated songwriter in the history. That is true. Zach Hansen is. What? Yeah. So he wrote a song. Well, well they all, they all did. They're, okay. Yeah. And then and they got nominated for a Grammy when they were... Yeah, kids. Before mm-hmm. they could drive cars. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Look, That's it how. was a catchy tune. I will give it that. It really was. Wasn't there a second follow-up single that was not as popular, but I feel was better? Where is the love? There you go. Mm-hmm. I knew it. Mm-hmm. Man, that's. I remember great. that one too. I see. Now you're now yeah. you're with us. Yeah. Poor Dolan. He's like, huh? He, has, he does he no has, idea. Dolan, he, what, what year are um, you born? I'm still thinking about Cake. <laughs> <laughs> the band. That too. Does Cake have a brewery? No, no. I bet Not you. Not as cool. I no. bet Cake probably. Knowing the guy in Cake, he probably has like a kombucha factory in his basement. Oh yeah, probably. He's more <laughs> off. He's off kilter. He's not following True. those trends. I like kombucha too. See, he wears hemp pants and and makes his own kombucha. That sounds about right. <laughs> that lines up with what I know. Uh, two Grammy nominations. Okay. For that, I think for that album, for right? The, um, th- that was their first album, right? Um, no, no, they oh, that was not get out. We're going to, we're going to team up on rich. Okay. Here. Okay. They had like a, they had the first album was like a self-produced one called Mbop. Mm. That was the album title. Okay. So that, that version, what I understand was, um, slower. That song was a lot slower. It was basically different. Oh. And then they partnered up with the dust brothers you heard about the Dust Brothers? I've heard of the Dust Brothers. Oh, I got stuff for you on that. I am so impressed by you right so now. So the Dust Brothers... a ton of information. ...cranked it up, and they sped up the song. That was their idea. It was like, we need this to go... We need it faster. We need yeah. it. And then uh, they tweaked it, changed it, and then obviously they were right. What's because it? we know it now. Oh, gosh. Didn't the Dust Brothers do... There was a song from Fight Club. You are going to be so happy that I did this research because I went through and I was like, Dust Brothers, I know that. Let's, yeah. get, let's get into it. The Dust Brothers started in 1985. Okay. They were DJs on the radio mm-hmm. in California and mm-hmm. they loved hip hop music. So okay. that was where they focused. They started out in that. Then they started writing and producing. Um, the first thing they did was with Tone Loke. Oh. So they're in Oakland area. Funky Cold Medina. That was on that album, correct? Sweet. Uh, and then he so they also worked with the Booya Tribe. You'll remember them. I remember them. Uh, and then they started. This is where they start blasting into the stratosphere. Paul's okay. Boutique. Oh, Beasties, yes. right? And yes. they're, they're they've done everything with the Beasties ever since. Possibly the best Beastie Boys album of all time. Then possibly, they, yeah, probably. 
It's one of the top albums, I would say. Top two. Then they jump over and they're like, hey, you know what's fun? Beck. Let's get with Beck and do Odele. Oh, yes. So he crushes that album yes. with their help. And then he, did, he and they go down a little bit because they help out Vince Neil. And they're like, well, mm. we got to pay the electric bill. Let's okay. get Vince okay. Neil in here. Uh, but then invited. they're like, You're hey, invited, but your friends can't come or something? Wasn't You that? can stand out in the parking lot. Okay, there we go. And watch. Mm. Um, and then they did a couple tracks on the Spawn soundtrack. They did one with Korn, yes, which you yes. might be remembering. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, they worked on the Howard Stern's Private Parts soundtrack. Oh, boy, yes. Uh, then they worked with the Rolling Stones in the late 90s on Bridges to Babylon. Okay. Um, which I have fondness for. I saw them on that tour. Yep. They scored the Fight Club movie. That's it. The entire movie they scored. Yes. And they're like, you know what? That was so much fun. Let's do it again. Classic movie. Dolan loves this one. Muppets from Space. Oh. They well, scored that one. Great follow up to Fight Club. Then they worked on this little ditty. Santana's Supernatural album. No way. And that one won a bunch of Grammys and sold a whole lot of stuff. A and bajillion. They basically don't have to do anything anymore, but they still do because they kept on going. And then Beck said, hey, I want to make another album kind of like Odile. Mm-hmm. So they made Guero. Mm. Remember that one? No. Okay. No. Dolan, E-Pro, know that one? Mm-mm. I'll play it when we're done. E-Pro, I do. I, that, yeah. Tenacious D. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're, we're back. Linkin Park. Mm-hmm. And then They Might Be Giants is one of the most. Oh, um, yes. And then in the United States, they were the Dust Brothers. In the UK, there was a group called the Dust Brothers too, uh, but they came. They were named afterwards, so they lost a lawsuit, and then they had to become the Chemical Brothers, which I'm sure you're familiar with the Chemical Brothers. Wait a minute, for real? Because mm-hmm. yeah. I'm very familiar with the Chemical Brothers. Yeah, they were the I Dust did. Brothers over there, but wow, the name was taken out. So, um. Yeah, so that's what I got with the Dust Brothers. So that's that's where the so, idea to change the song kind of. So sparked. that would have fallen somewhere in between that kind of in your research that mm-hmm. kind of after Beck before Spawn. It would have been around that same time. Yeah, it would because I think in it, that. didn't it chart like ninety seven? Wasn't that when it started? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was around that same time. I think. Interesting. Yeah. So, so why? Like, what about... There's a lot of pop music. How come this one? Right. Uh, I had a huge crush on Taylor Hansen. There you go. Well, Let's get to the truth of it. started it. it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it just hasn't gone away yet. Mm. My stepsister used to beg me to love Sync instead of Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> she was so embarrassed. <laughs> like, too bad. <laughs> too My bad. heart's with the Hansen. She would yes. try, but... Yeah, because hmm. there was that whole, then there was like 98 Degrees and, uh, Backstreet, Boys. and the Backstreet Boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of them. Oh, yeah, yeah 98 Degrees. 98 Degrees. That. Can you believe I remember that? Couldn't don't tell forget, you what hey, song. Don't forget O-Town. Oh, yeah. O-Town, O-Town yeah. That's I'm a looking good out one. for Dolan on that Dolan one. Dolan knows. He's shaking his head like he covered some of that music once. I hope he did. Nope. No. Uh, we, we played it during one of our plays, though, in, in high school. Nice. During one act. Hmm. Okay, so the second beer that you brought us from Hanson Brothers Beer That one Company. was, just before we get into that one, th- yes. this one was really good, by I, the way. So everything I, I, I want to be very clear, this wasn't anything what I expected. I right. expected this to be pretty average to mm-hmm. maybe just slightly above average. It was great. It was hoppy tasting, but it mm-hmm. wasn't bitter. Nope. Like, and it was citrusy and pretty smooth. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm a fan of that one. I would order that. Yeah. I would order that if, if, it, if I saw it on tap. Spiced farmhouse ale. Yeah, okay. So the, the second one now, Hop Jam Festival Ale. It's a spiced farmhouse mm. ale. Um, the only farmhouse that I think I've had on of any regularity is Tank Seven. Okay. From Boulevard. Tell so, us about the uh, the brewery or the tap room. Yeah. What, what's that like? So, not a ton of information online about it, and maybe and you've been there, correct? Um, no. You have not. Mm-mm. So I, here's what I do know about it. Uh, founded in 2013, so it's been around for a bit, um, and they've they have probably six to eight in beers on tap right now at okay. any given time. The, this, but all three of these that we have are on tap currently. 209 North Main Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I was kind of curious, like I didn't, I'm not sure how big Tulsa is, yeah, but I'm familiar with because I used to staff Hillcrest Medical Center and uh, and Oklahoma Oklahoma State University Medical Center there pretty regularly like those were two of my big strongholds in oklahoma back when licensure was very tough to get um before 
they they changed some of their right. stuff around. It was a it was a solid four weeks to get an Oklahoma license, and that was just prohibitive. And now it's compact. And I now think, it's compact. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so five minutes away from Hillcrest and St. John's, and five I'm sorry, ten minutes away from Hillcrest and St. John's, five minutes away from Oklahoma State University Medical Center. So right downtown, right mm. close to all three of those hospitals. They're all kind of right in that kind of circle right there. Okay. And very very easy to get to i think the one the coolest thing and you see this on their cans and it's it's prominent on their website it says beer plus music equals awesome i would agree with that that's uh, my kind of math i love it (laughs) i can do that math i would love a shirt that says beer plus music equals i bet you they they, have them do they Mm -hmm. do they have it yeah i may have to order one Mm -hmm. so the rest of the the rest of it i did on well on this collaboration they did and this is the collab is interesting let's get into the farmhouse here and and try this that's so tell me what what's a farmhouse like what's the what what, what am i looking at um you're looking at kind of like a little bit darker saison so kind of floral, um, mm-hmm. sweeter. Yeah, should be less. It has definitely less carbonation than that last. Definitely one. Definitely less. The it's, color's lighter. Can you say it's spicy? Well, this one is. They're not normally, but this one says it was spiced. Mm-hmm. Um, and not spiced in like a hot way. Spiced in maybe no. like a Christmas way. Yeah, maybe. I think I don't know if this is a seasonal for them or if it's always on. Um, I'm not sure. I did. A, there was a little bit on there. There's a festival down there, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, but Hop Jam is that what it is? Hop, Hop Jam. Jam that that they did this for. Okay, so it's like a special release mm-hmm. for that. I mean, this is a kind of beer that you could drink in the summertime. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a hot, hot beer. What's the ABV on that, Dolan? Do you have any? Six point five. Yeah. Okay. So, mm. slightly more than what you would be used to in a Bud Light, Coors Light, yeah. Miller Light type of thing or whatever. And what was that pale ale? 7.5. 7. 5. I don't. That borders on an IPA. It kind of does. IBU and like alcohol ABV situation. That's very close. But it didn't taste like that though. It didn't taste 7.5. And this no. one doesn't taste 6.5. No. So these are sneaky. Mm-hmm. I would categorize that as. Hmm, that's pretty good. I do like that. I like. I mean, I like the first one more. But this was. Me this too. is definitely a. This is. There's nothing wrong with this one at all. Yeah. If you're if you're at Hop Jam. Yep. This would be serviceable for sure Kitty, what kind of beers would you order normally let's say we're not drinking hansen beers yeah if these are off the mm-hmm. table yep blue moon is my favorite oh, okay it's my go-to kind of close to that sort of mm-hmm. citrusy floral notes of of like a wheat beer yes yeah. it's, it's kind of like that yeah not bad have you ever had the tank seven from boulevard i have not it's similar mm-hmm. I similar would say, yeah. i would say tank seven maybe a little stronger probably maybe than this tank seven is available Everywhere now. Everywhere. All, over, all across the United States. Yep. Uh, let's see. What else do I got here for us? Um, I did some... The song was huge, right? We all agree. It was number one mm-hmm. in... I found Australia, Canada, Germany, New Zealand, United States, United Kingdom. Uh, it was on the charts forever. Yeah. Ended up... I don't know what... I don't remember where I wrote this down from, but was the decade so the 90s album mm-hmm. chart this came in as number six nine for overall all albums in the 90s like wow i don't know if that's based on sales or plays or what but okay. we're talking you know the 90 the decade of the 90s was weird musically um yeah because it started out hair metal in the early 90s late 80s early 90s was yes. that and then grunge came through mm-hmm. and then after that died out then it was like anything goes yes one hit wonder central Boy bands, mm-hmm. like cake, cake. <laughs> I knew it. He's gonna bring up cake again, but I don't even know one song that they sing. Uh, mm-hmm. The distance is that the yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. short skirt, long jacket. Mm-hmm. That's another one. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. Dolan will sing that for you later. Mm-hmm. He'll mm-hmm. play it on his guitar for you. So yeah. here, here was something that um, I was interested to find out, and I I did not know about this before, and okay. it's gonna bring some music credibility to Hanson for people like maybe me and and dolan okay uh taylor has an has maybe more than one but he has another band out there and this one is a quote-unquote super group okay it's called tinted windows and i'm gonna guess she knows about it i do all right so he sings in it okay uh james ehaw 
Smashing Pumpkins. He's the guitar player. He's okay. also in Perfect Circle, you know. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, Adam Schlesinger is the bass player from Fountains of Wayne. Okay. And then Bun E. Carlos is drummer from Cheap Trick. What a and weird mix. A band. And they have an album. Really? It's on Spotify. I checked it yesterday. It has, let's see, 85,000 plays. Wow. So a lot less than... What's the style? Hanson. Like what's... Power pop, I would say. Um, hmm. Kind of cheap trick-ish. Okay. Um, with some kind of cool guitar noodling stuff from James in there. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I was totally unaware of that before I, yesterday. You knew about this. I did know about this. So in, in the land of, of Hanson super fans, like where does this fall? How do, is that... It's acceptable that he's, you know, like... We, Oh you, yeah, you listen to this too, and yeah, yeah you got to get new okay. new tunes from that golden voice. Sure. How else are you gonna do it? I, I think they it. only did one album, though. Yeah, I think I'm it's only sure. one. It's just this one, all I could find. And help me, Taylor's the oldest, yes? No, no. middle, middle. Who's March fourteenth, nineteen eighty three. Super fan. <laughs> wow. Super fan. I feel like there might have been a poster or two involved <laughs> at some point in time. Yeah. Oh yes, my multiple room was, posters. Yes. Yeah. Floor to ceiling. Interesting. See, when we were kids, mm-hmm. there was like Tiger Beat and Bop magazine. Yes. Yes. I don't know if what that would have been in the 90s. They still had that. Did they? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm guessing he was on there. I, oh, yeah. I had a Pearl Jam poster. I had multiple Pearl Jam posters on my wall. But not so. for those reasons. I'm not thinking. Well, no. Maybe. No. For those reasons, I had an Alyssa Milano poster on my wall. Oh, but okay. But that's... <laughs> All right. Do you remember this one? I'm, where she's, I'm, tr- I'm just picturing it right now. Yes. Yeah. Where she's wearing the New Jersey Devils uh, hockey jersey, and she has mm. the hockey stick. Okay. Do you remember this? I remember it. I know. I, I, I can, know you remember. I it. closed my eyes and tell you exactly where it was <laughs> on my wall when I was when I was in junior high, high okay. school. Right. All right. Okay. Wow. Who's the boss? She so. was. <laughs> I guess. Holy smokes! So oh, it's go hot in here go, now. <laughs> go through. So Taylor's not, who's the oldest then? Isaac. Isaac is the oldest. Mm-hmm. And Isaac is the youngest. Okay, and so then w- w- musically, what did they do? Taylor sang, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taylor Zach... sings and does the piano. Okay. Uh, Zach sings and does drums. Okay. And Isaac sings and does guitar. Guitar. They didn't have a bass. They didn't have they a bass played player. on the keyboard. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, there you go. That's one way to have a three piece. You don't need that bass usually. You know. See, I... Dolan, you're you're not unnecessary. The bass player to cake. <laughs> so talented. No. Gosh. No. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, let's open the last beer. Let's, let's do this. that. So I, I've been pronouncing this this company this brewery's name wrong forever. What is it? Destile? Destile. Is that not right? I don't know. Destile? Destil? Destile? I, sure. So I like that little peach on the side. It says twelve ounces. They did a collaboration with the Hanson Brothers for just this year, Peach Milkshake IPA. So we've gone from zero to sixty here. Yeah. Right. So, and and have you ever had? Have you have you tried this one? I have not. Awesome! No. I can't wait for you to try it. So, this way lighter. Oh, well, I color. was thinking. Okay. Way way lighter in color. As you pour these, this is so. There was a ton of information because this must have just came out. Like you must have just been able to get this. Like, this came out in May, I believe, because they have a Hanson Day. Hanson Day. They have Hanson Day. As you will in Tulsa. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, every okay. year. And it's a big. It, and, is this why you went? Uh, no, I have never actually been. You need to go. I know. This was my first time in Tulsa when I just mm. went. You're going to go next year. I, I mean, have to go. You should. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So well, you just went down there just for fun, like family thing or uh, whatever? No, just because. Just because? Awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, the co-founder of D- Distill. Distill? Mm-hmm. Sure. Matt Potts met Zach, Isaac, I mean, Taylor, Isaac, and Zach when he was drumming with them at a uh, it was a, a festival called the Intersection of Beer and Music at the Great American Beer Festival. So they were playing together. Okay. And uh, from and they played together for three years, from 2014 to 2016. And then uh, they still launched their beers in Oklahoma in 2016. So and, then they're like, okay. So then they've been is... working on this collaboration ever since. Do they have more than one beer together? Just, just this one. Hmm. And it was interesting. So Matt, the the co-founder said uh, it was an exciting collaboration that has produced the ultimate cul- culmination, the intersection of beer plus music between Distill and Hanson. It's been a fun project that's likely to begin, that's likely the beginning of many more beers to come. Hmm. So, and then t- cool. Taylor, 
had said, Taylor named it after, let me tell me if you, tell me if you know this song, Penny and Me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there was a line in Penny and Me that refers to Pink Moonlight. And that's what it's called? And that plays off of the, yeah, it's called Pink Moonlight. Pink Moonlight, Milkshake IPA. I named my dog Penny after that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my son has a middle name of Taylor. <laughs> This is amazing. I love it. I love it. Look, I need my kids after comic book characters, so I can't. can't, No, everybody's got their thing. So that I there's there's absolutely no judging here at all whatsoever. (laughs) But yeah, so he uh, the the inspiration in naming this collaboration, they look to their song "Penny and Me," which references which references Pink Moonlight as a subtle nod to the peaches and lactose in the beer. Hmm. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you that this looks scary for some people, Mm -hmm. and. Uh, two years ago, I would have been like, this is a bad beer. There's floaties. But now I know mm-hmm. that that's on purpose. But and that's it's on supposed purpose. to look that way. And it's, I and think it's... I got the most floaties mm, here. I don't know, man. Mine's pretty. Well, you got oh, the bottom yeah. of the can. I did. Mm-hmm. We probably should have rolled it. Mm, probably. Mm-hmm. probably should have rolled that before mm-hmm. we opened it because Rich's just... looks pretty clear. Aaron just taught me about the rolling of the mm-hmm. beer. There's a whole science to that to mm-hmm. mix it around. But. I'll tell you more than That's anything. Good. You get that. You get that lactose flavor. Mm-hmm. You get that. You understand. It's. I don't get a lot of peach. No, I, I don't wouldn't either. say. I don't. But either. I definitely get the milkshake part. Yep. And it's a nice light IPA. Mm-hmm. That tastes good. I like that. There isn't a whole lot too. There's not a whole lot on the IPA side. I don't think. Like there isn't a ton of bitterness. No. Nope. There's some. I mean, that's what. That's what this style is supposed to be. It's not bitter. So, dry yeah. hopped at the end and kind of cloudy which it definitely is cloudy it's kind of a fun cross-section of of beers mm-hmm. just to, from a pale ale to a farmhouse to then a, a milkshake ipa yeah. which you know you're going from one very extreme to one very normal yeah i would say that so, sounds good it's a it's a fun so it's a fun mix i think i would like to tr- i would like to see if they do another one collaboration beer and see what it is because mm-hmm. that other brewery is known for their they're sours. Sours. Yes. Right? Some of the best sours I've ever had. Especially in a can. Yes. Like, they're just amazing. So I'd Unbelievable like to see, sours. I'd like to see what they can do. Mm-hmm. It's it, weird to me that they would make this be the first one, but I don't know. It's good. I like it. Out of that, where, where where one is very pale ale, where you know their mm-hmm. flagship is that, and the other is, is very sour base, how did they come to the Milkshake IPA? I'd be interested to find out. Yeah. You know, how that happened. I don't know we'll how they to, decided on that. We'll have to do some more research or something, but yeah, if yeah. it's going to be, you're going to call that beer that, that mm hops and it mm-hmm. has to be, it better be hoppy. It better be hoppy. Because if this is what you got, mm-hmm. you'd be like, what? Yeah. Where's the hops? I, that's what I expected. Just, and mm-hmm. that's why it really, really surprised me. Yeah, that's good. I was, I was super surprised. Well, I have a little bit more research to awesome. go over and uh, these will all be stuff she knows probably. Uh, but I wanted to see, I thought this was, they're all married, right? They've all yes, been married a long time. And have lots of kids. So yeah. Isaac met his wife. I found this on Wiki also. Met his wife at a show. It was like a 19, I don't remember, before 1999. Wow. They um, all actually met their wives at shows. At shows. Well, so we saw her in the fifth row. The rock stars. And I he's mean, like, hey, you. That one. They have three kids. All right. He's the least kids guy. Okay. Whoa, whoa three is the least? Yeah. Good work. Taylor, middle kid. Mm-hmm. Met his wife in 1999. They're on 20 years of marriage. Nice. They've only been a band 25. So think of how young he was when he got yeah. married. Yeah, you, when I you cried know. a lot that day. Mm, it wasn't I you. Bet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. This is so good. Were you in the crowd like with your? With, like, this on. didn't happen. Me. It was not supposed to happen that Damn way. It. Well, they had six kids. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, she just had one a couple wow. months ago. Okay. And then there's Zach. Met his wife in 2006. Okay. They've got four. So that's my math. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of Hansons. That's like 13. <laughs> 13 Hansons. And Hanson kids. Mm-hmm. Ha- why Why Tulsa? Have, were they always from Tulsa? Yeah. They're, yeah. Okay. And so then how were they discovered for the first time? Um, They actually got denied record a record label. So mm. they made their own. Mm-hmm. So it's called Three Car Garage. Okay. So they just write and produce and do all of the stuff themselves. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So how do they get to the point where the Dust Brothers can get involved? Right. Because if you're a little local band of kids in Oklahoma, that's mm-hmm. that's in the middle of nowhere. How do they that's get to... their album. 
title. Is it? Middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. Boom. <laughs> there you go. You must nice. have read that somewhere. I, it was maybe subconsciously the, I had that, but that's head. that's literally where it is. So how did they get to the that yeah. crushing MTV? Right. Well, see, uh, I think the music biz was way different back then. Like now you have to be somebody or have something before a record label decides to invest money into you. Oh yeah, definitely was back different. Then, back then it was then. like I don't know what's going to work, especially in the 90s. They were throwing I, money at everywhere. I have no clue what's going to work. Let's just put money to it and see what happens. There was a lot of money. People were buying records back then. There was no mm-hmm. streaming or mm-hmm. anything like that, so there was way more money coming in. Coming off of success like Odile. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dust Brothers doing a, a, a that album. Yeah. That album was enormous. Yeah. How, I'm I'm super curious, like how, and maybe it was just like the he heard it and was like, well, wait a minute, you know, yeah, music's changing, people want this. It's kind of reminds me of Rick Rubin because he also mm-hmm. he worked on Licensed Ill, right? Yeah, he was a hip hop guy, mm-hmm. and now he's like the go to for everything. He did Johnny Cash, he's done Neil mm-hmm. Diamond, he's done the Avett Brothers. Pretty much anybody that's anybody is recorded with Rick Rubin. Mm-hmm. Same same sort of thing. So yep. it's not like he has to do these things. They must just really love. You know, seeing what they can create and help. that that differences and and yeah, I mean, just that drive. I think that must, but I just I'd really be interested to find out how they got involved. Yeah, where was mm. that? Where did that first happen? Like, how did they? How did yeah, how did they hear? hear how the did they hear the time? slow version? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like you, it's not like Justin Bieber hearing it on YouTube or whatever and thinking, right. holy cow, right, right, that dude's gonna be a monster. And yeah. so I'm gonna I'm gonna list off a few things I found um, places that they've showed up. In mm-hmm. pop culture, on on TV shows, okay, and other things, and uh, we'll we can talk about those. But okay. they were guests and maybe judges on Cupcake Wars. Have you seen that one? I have. Oh, yeah. That's on the DVR. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Is. Let's see, Dancing with the Stars. They played a they song. They played there. a song on that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, they were on Good Morning America to talk about being a band for twenty five years. They had their twenty fifth anniversary and like a little show concert nice. thing. Awesome. Mm-hmm. They were on Hell's Kitchen. Oh, with uh, Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seen that one? I did not see that Interesting. one. Interesting. Okay. I love me some Gordon Ramsay. They are in the Katy Perry video for yeah. Last Friday Night. Really? Yeah, I guess. I've seen that I video. don't know if I have, but... How do you say Last Friday Night without singing it? It's easy, because I don't know Last the song. Friday Last Friday Night. Night. That's easy. <laughs> see, right there. I do not know that song. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> it's not Hanson. I don't listen to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's Katy. You guys switch seats. <laughs> Here's here's the best thing. Okay. And I was like, okay, I can get with these guys. I yep. like this. Yep. They covered Slipknot's Wait and Bleed. No, they did they not. Did. I did not know they that. They did cover it, and then they said, hey, guess what? We're going to put out a whole album of Slipknot covers. It happened to be on April Fool's Day, but they did cover <laughs> Wait and Bleed and like was out for a while on the internet. What? Yeah. So I was like, I okay. I know that. Instantly going to look this up. Yeah. I like that, and I like beer. Hanson, you guys are all right with me. That's pretty kick ass. <laughs> so they won me over with that. Yeah. Awesome. That is... And they play instruments. That's the other thing. Like a lot of these, because yeah. they were kind of pigeonholed with that boy band thing, but mm-hmm. they were like writing songs and playing instruments, you know? Like, they were legit. Yeah. Uh, they artists, were a band. Yeah. Yeah. They were a band, I yeah. would say, as, as, as opposed to a group. Weren't they on The Simpsons too? I Probably. Or they were on The Simpsons. Probably. I don't know about that one. We'll look mm. it up. Look it up. I would almost bet that they, they were, were probably on South Park. Park. Were they on South Park? This no. was before South Park. Oh, they before. were on. This was been right that first yeah, year. Been right around there. Yeah. MTV Celebrity Death Death Match. Match. Celebrity Death Match. Oh, yeah. Yes. Nice. Mm-hmm. They were on that one. Which they should bring back. By the way, they are. They bringing lost it back. to the Spice Girls. Oh. They are bringing it back. Well, Scary Spice is on then, so I would. Just, yeah. She would. Celebrity win. Death yeah. Match is coming yeah. back yeah. for real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I would watch that. Everything on the. Everything from the 90s is coming back now. Except music videos. Well, they're on. They're just on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. They're still making them. They never stop. They just don't show them on MTV. Gosh, I remember just turning to Channel 33 because that was MTV and oh. it's just watching music videos. I remember the day we finally got MTV. Yeah. Like, it was amazing. Amazing. Ch- it, well, obviously, it literally changed my life. Yeah. Like, that was my babysitter was MTV. Mm-hmm. Oh, so <laughs> MTV in the summertime, right? you couldn't wait for summer because you'd be yep. watching like Depeche Mode videos. I remember mm. watching those in the mm-hmm. summertime. Yep. All the hits, man. Smashing yep. Pumpkins. Yes. yes. It was so great. Yeah. Remember when they did, this was the worst, when they would do blocks of different ones. So they'd do rock blocks. Oh, of and, course. And whatever. 
I just the, well, there was one. There was some that were just garbage, and yeah, oh, I would yeah. I would have to turn it. I would turn it back to Nickelodeon. Oh, so this is how old I am. I'm, I mostly just kept it on there, mm-hmm. but yeah. that's all right. Rock Blocks were the best, though. Rock Blocks, that was, that MTV, was, that was the best. And then Beavis and Butthead was on at six o'clock, and it was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's the was best. Pretty good. All right, so Katie, give me one as we wrap up here. Give me one fact about Hanson that we didn't talk about. That yeah. we didn't talk about. That would just blow our minds mm. like um hops that like that introduced us to this whole thing give us something and maybe i built that up too much i apologize yeah i we've talked about everything tell us your he favorite song research. um I'm gonna there's guess. so many all of them all of them <laughs> that's yeah. the right answer i can't yeah, okay. i can't pick a favorite. what was the last song you of theirs you listened to mbop mm. Still to this day, it still holds. It still they holds. They play it at every single show. Well, still of course, to they do. Day. have to. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, Pearl Jam still plays Even Flow and Alive and Black sure. and Jeremy. And yeah. like, I just go back to you know my favorite band. You like, got to cater to the audience, right? right? Mm-hmm. I want to go and I want to hear it every single time. How many I times have you seen Hanson in concert? 13. Nice. Excellent. How many times have you seen him in Nebraska? They only came here once. Really? So you've seen them 12 times outside of here. You've traveled oh, yeah. to see them. That's hardcore. Mm-hmm. That's how you know you're really a hardcore fan is if you travel and like stay overnight somewhere. Oh, yeah. To, That's to how I met them. my best friend. Really? In line at a Hanson concert. The dude that you take pictures with? Yeah. Uh, on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Tell us about that. What yeah. show? Where was that? Madison, Wisconsin. College town. That's a long ways to drive for a concert. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. Not if it's your favorite band. No. What's the farthest you've ever gone for a concert? Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. No. Oh, that's sad. That's false. That's false. How about this? Um, We drove, this is in college, we drove to Lollapalooza in Denver. Okay. We went from Concordia, Kansas to Denver, Colorado. Okay. So nine-ish hours. What was the the main band there that you wanted to see? Oh. What was the reason? The Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. But Sonic Youth played a whole... Okay. Um... Uh, what's his What's his name? Coolio was on the second stage. <laughs> oh Coolio, Coolio, Gang, like and Gangsters Paradise. He, Coolio, yes, he dominated the second oh, I'm stage. Sure. It was great. Uh, I want to say Beck was there too. Mm, that sounds good. That year and came out on stage with Coolio, and it was I'd buy it. Awesome. So he's kind of a. He was like a. He was pretty close to a rapper yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dolan, what about you? Farthest you've been to a concert. Uh, and not one that you played, but one that you went right, to. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Norfolk, Nebraska. <laughs> no. <laughs> eh, wrong. That's Unless terror. that's real. Is that real? <laughs> um, well, if we're talking about one that I haven't played at, yeah, that's real. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. Yep. If Cake were to play in Denver. They're in Illinois around uh, Chicago in August. Are you going? And Chris Madrigal and I are probably going to carpool there. Look at that. Maybe. Maybe. Why wouldn't you? Why? Yeah. Why not? I want to. Yeah. Um, it's your favorite band, and I stay if they're like 10 hours away. Do you got to go. And yeah. they did have a long hiatus. I don't want that to happen Have again. you ever seen them? No. Never. <gasps> never. Then you have to. You should totally go. <laughs> I want to. Where's the, where the farthest you've been? Probably Madison, Madison. Madison. Yeah, Madison. What's that? That's eight-ish? Seven hours? Mm-hmm. Something like that? That's it's pretty far. Eight. How big was that show? Like, what did they draw for that? How many how many fans did they draw for that show? Oh, thousands. I don't know exactly how many, but yeah. most of their shows sell out still. Like a like an arena, like a regular. Yeah, when they played here, they played at the Slowdown. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Was, like we that. were just there. We were just there last night. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm wearing the shirt. That's who we saw oh, yesterday. That's crazy. The Beths. The Beths. They're from New Zealand. Oh, yes. Okay. So that's a long way to go. That's a long. That's to a play very for long 50 way to go. people in Omaha. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. No kidding. But before we before we end, I mm-hmm. just want to. So on the can, they actually go into their beer plus music equals awesome. They break down that. They break down the equation. Equation. Oh, yeah. All right, professor. Give so it to us. It says we are committed to great beer, and with each brew, we help you discover new music. Oh. The awesome is that the portion of our proceeds go to help communities in need. Find out more at HansonBrothersBeer.com. 
Nice. Charitable keeps, efforts. Keeps getting better. Good looking guys <laughs> writing songs. <laughs> What's not to like? What's not to like? <laughs> mm. Exactly. This is good beer. Wow. I am, one, I am so glad that we that we did the bios, that yeah. we finally got back to accounting and finance and we did those bios and that we asked those questions and that we, we found we, us out. We dug in deep enough to find out. I have a friend named Katie and she lives here. She's I think she's an attorney. Okay. And she is also a major Hanson fan. Like not to your level. I don't think anybody is, but mm. I mean she's she's to the level of fan where she actually knows what's still happening with him, oh, right? Well like most people. Why like are us, we not best friends? You should be friends with her. So yes. she'll she'll and she likes beer. Like she's so she will be into <laughs> this. I'm I guarantee she's had at least one of those beers, but wow. uh, I'm, I'm excited to send this to her when it's done because it'll probably blow her mind a little bit too. That we actually drank it and talked and that about there's, it. There's more. I mean, obviously there's more they know. Her. There's yes. more people around that, that are into it. But that's the thing about music, man. It means everything to people differently. Yes. And you'll you'll find your favorite thing and connect to it. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's, I'm always looking still. I, that's what I love about, especially your research, but then some of the stuff that the newer bands that you bring up and, and things like that, like it's really expanded some of my horizons on, on this where mm-hmm. you're going to break out and listen to different stuff. Well, I think there's like some statistics that show like most people, 90% of people stop listening to new music after they're like 25 or 30 years old. Mm. Um, they're just into what they're into and that's it, right? Sure. So like when you walk out on the floor, how many times are you hearing 80s tunes just blamming yep. from Madrigal's? computer that's yes. where he's at right so True. i am always always looking for new stuff that's a challenge for me and i love it so i try to, to buck that system and and uh you'll find stuff like this but then it's also fun to go back and revisit mm-hmm. music that's meant a lot to you your whole life and see mm-hmm. how it still uh does it still jive and does it still mean that stuff to you so even 13 albums later for a band that technically could have been called a one-hit wonder right and then well they are called that i think yeah, probably. a lot of people call them that sure yeah. i mean they could have definitely stopped doing this right. they don't need to do it anymore but they just love it so they probably so they the keep, same thing with beer yep 12 albums later and and a successful brewery what seven eight i'm sorry six years later right yeah that's pretty cool that's pretty darn cool i mean i'd i'd take one hit wouldn't you dolan Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You could make a whole career on one hit now. Absolutely. <laughs> and really good beer, apparently, mm-hmm. too. So there you go. All right. Well, Katie, Brian, we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's have another beer. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.